Hello guys, it's May here um, and I just wanted to tell you about a film that is now out, it's called Rocks and it's such an amazing film about sisterhood and family and friendship um, and just, you know, growing up in London and I watched it and I just loved it so much and um, I was lucky enough to have a small, small part in it. They used my song Busy Tone in one of the scenes when Rox is trying to get a job at the salon. Uh, so that was just really special to me. And then I was able to write a song for the soundtrack called A Little Bit of Your Time. Uh, and it's just such an amazing film uh, with so many amazing women involved. So it was an honor. And because I love the film so much, I wanted to just have a little chat with uh, some of the main characters, um, Kosa and Bucky. I was lucky enough to chat to and just wanted to, you know, ask them what it was like, what the process was like and just, you know, how this newfound success has kind of been for them. So, without any further ado, that's what people say, uh, this is our little chat that we had on Zoom and I hope you guys like it. Hey. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Hi. I'm good, nice to meet you, I guess. <laughs> However, this is working. You guys are looking lovely. Thank you too. I've been so excited to like chat to you guys because obviously I watched the film like a while ago and I was kind of just like in awe of the whole thing. And the more I learned about it, I was just like, I didn't realize the, like, the process of how you guys got there. So thank I'm you. Excited. I'm excited. Mm. All right, so I'm May, didn't already know. And um, I just kind of wanted to chat to you guys because is it so you guys didn't have a lot of like acting experience before this film, right? So no. how, how how did you like how did you feel? How, how did the opportunity come about first first of all? Because I know it wasn't so like sort of black and white like you got offered the part and then you were in it. It was sort of a a, pro, a process and you were involved in the making of it. So how like how how was that for you like it being your first time acting and actually being part of the actual production like how was how was that i feel like that's what makes rocks such a like a such an amazing experience the fact that we was involved from the get-go um mm. like in the development of the actual story um and i would say like almost like the casting as well um yeah it was such an overwhelming ex experience I remember like meeting Kosa for the first time and we were just, we just clicked like, we just clicked like that, honestly. Yeah. It, was a, it was a connection. And meeting the rest of the, of the girls, some of them I knew already, um, meeting the writers, Teresa Akoka and Claire Wilson. And I remember just clicking with um, Teresa straight away and just vibes in with Claire so much. And Sarah and Lucy Pardy and just straight to the cast narratives. Everyone was just, giving so much that's what made the, the process was really like a collaboration like if i was to describe rocks in like one word in terms of like the production and the process the word is like collaboration collaborative yeah, yeah i think it was it's so interesting that you say that you two like met each other because of this film but watching it like I couldn't believe that you two hadn't been friends for years. Like it was so insane, and it was it was really nice for me because I saw so much of kind of like m my sort of childhood and like my like secondary school experience. It was literally like I was watching a sort of fly on the wall like documentary. Um, did you? I mean, that, so just it obviously must be easier like portraying that friendship when you just mesh so easily. Was a lot of your dialogue was, was a lot of it kind of improvised because that's kind of I was like they can't this can't be scripted like it's too real like it's too good like they can't just be reading a strip script and then doing it so I wanted to know like especially I know when you two had that argument scene when you were at um, Samaya's house I was just like this is too accurate how much of that was scripted or how much of that was just you guys kind of just feeling out the mo like the, the moment um yeah on set we were given like when we had a scene, we were given kind of an outline. So it was like, okay, like you, me, and Bookie are in this Zoom, and then we'd kind of have to improvise the words where we'd go from there. So yeah, we just had to go off the back and just bounce back to each other. 
was that was that like okay I feel a bit relieved because I like you feel like you had a bit more freedom and you could kind of go with it how you wanted or was it a bit like oh I've got to come up with this like content this is actually a bit scary like because sometimes like just like learning a script and making it your own is actually can be a little bit easier than coming up with it yourself and just going with the moment a lot of people like can't can't do that so did you find that quite challenging or did that make it slightly easier for you guys as we got into the process and we went along it just started to get easier and when we're with the other girls and when i'm with bookie kind of we just bounce off each other so yeah it definitely got easier but it was difficult at the beginning what about you bookie um yeah similar to what Kosa said i feel like like on this on set there was so much of a balance like the script was always there and because um Teresa and Claire are such wonderful writers. Um, if we ever felt like apprehensive about the improv, we always we always had the script to go back on. And the way Sarah direct, directed the film was she, at times where we had like blocks because it does happen, right? Yeah, of course. We she would like feed us lines from the script, but we would kind of remix the lines and say it as if we were um, we were saying it for the first time in our own words. So, yeah, I mean, um, as Kosa said, the process and the improv was much more easier doing it with people that were so talented. Of course. So we were all just like bouncing off each other's energy as yeah. Kosa. It just looked like it just flowed really nicely. There was never a moment where I didn't, I didn't believe it. And for me, like with everything, like even with, like with music and with film, like it doesn't matter what the production cost is or, you know, how, like if I don't believe it, then I'm just not in it. And I just, it was, it was one of the few films where I just like, I was just sort of in it from, from, the, from the very beginning. And I thought it was really nice. I watched a sort of Q and A with you guys. And I think it was Sarah and, and Claire and uh, Teresa. And then just the way they were talking, it was really refreshing to see like people behind the scenes and writers really, really care about like what the actors wanted to say and how they wanted to portray it because, you know, you you are the most like, you know, you are young girls like growing up in London and I just kind of like how they didn't write that narrative for you. Like they allowed you to kind of come up with it yourself because, you know, it's it's real. And And how does it feel your sort of first film being such a sort of true and positive like representation of where you're from because sometimes I know of a lot of the programs out now it can be quite negative yeah like I totally agree with you it's like when I was growing up I would always watch these shows where they would have picked East London to be so like gritty dirty like dark you know there's always something negative like happening so it was nice to just like be in a film where it's like this is true friendship. This is true girls just going to school, like talking about silly stuff, having food fights. So, yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I mean, like, it's a privilege to be in a film, but to be in a film that holds so much weight and it's, it speaks volumes to so many people, that's like, that's what's so profound for me. Like, I mean, like, the rarity of like um, representation in film, um, in independent cinema, and like, just, the film industry in general is quite sad and me and Kosa and the rest of the girls being in a film like this that can potentially like pivot be pivotal um, in the industry is is sick I feel privileged to be in a space with these with all these women and yeah. to make work that's that could essentially be a revolutionary if that's yeah. yeah yeah of course that's I mean that's how it, that's how it feels and that's how it feels watching it and can I just say Emmanuel is what's his name? Is it oh, Diangelo? Yes. I was literally like, where did this little boy come <laughs> from? Because I, I have three little brothers, and I'm just like, it, it's it. it I, I couldn't. I just couldn't believe that you weren't real siblings. That he was even acting. I was just like, this is insane. Like, is he as sort of charismatic and funny? Like, was he just playing himself? Like, because that's kind of how it how it how it felt. And I was just like, oh my god, this little boy is a star. Like, this is insane. Like, what? How did you, Bookie, how did you kind of build that relationship with him? Because obviously on screen, it was just, so, it just, you know, came across so sort of like real. Did you have to have to spend a lot of time with him like offset or did you, was it the same with Kosa? Did you just like sort of click and it was just, it just happened really naturally? Um, I think I don't have a younger brother. I'm the youngest in my family, so I don't really know how it, 
how it felt to have a younger sibling, but I've always wanted a younger sibling. So when I had a chance to, um, to play this role with D'Angelo, I was excited. I was gonna have a younger brother for once. And now I have a younger, younger brother forever because me and D'Angelo will stay in contact forever. And so you guys obviously had the experience of going to the Toronto Film Festival as well, which I read, and that must have been mind blowing from going from like, you know, obviously this is your first experience and you're learning everything to suddenly, and ha I've never been to, how do those things work? Like, do you all watch, do you watch the film on like a big screen? Is it like, how does it work and how did it, because I've never, I've never been to a film festival before. Um, <laughs> how did that work and how, I mean, how did that feel being, being part of that? And that is like, that's, you know, being part of history and that's probably like prestigious stuff. Like, that's mad. Like, how did that, how was that, you know, whole experience for you? Like, um, whoever wants to go first <laughs> it's, it's actually so insane because like you said you go from the normal school you know and then this happens and the next thing you know we're in Toronto first of all we're just so grateful because like in like first experience and we're already in Toronto Film Festival was insane but yeah how do they work it was really weird like you just get taken in these cars and then you do the red carpet event and then they ask you questions like when you're walking and people like kind of you know stop you ever and then you get into the like big cinema and then there's people sitting there and then you the cast and the, mem the people who come kind of just sat down and then we watch the film and it's so weird because you're not actually watching the film. We're kind of trying to hear, you know, how the audience thinking it. Of course, they yeah. like it. And they're just, oh, someone laughed. Okay, that's good, that's good. So, <laughs> you can't concentrate, you're like, yeah, you can't concentrate. I'm looking behind me, I'm like, yeah, okay, they're laughing, okay. <laughs> someone laughed, yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience, and especially because we all went together. So, it was so surreal and beautiful. Yeah. Oh, was no. that like, was that, was that the moment? I mean, I'm, prob I'm sure like you had loads of moments like this and you probably still are, but was that the moment where you were like, okay, like shit's getting real now, like this is mad. Or, or what was that moment? Was there like a sort of penny drop moment where you were like, my life could actually like change a little bit after this? Like this is actually a bit crazy or, or has it still not happened yet? It takes a while to sink in when, you know, when you go through stuff like this. So I was just wondering, was that the moment where you were like, I'm just moving stuff? I feel like I've had a mini moment like that, but it still fully hasn't like sunk it in. I feel like when it comes out, then perhaps I will have that moment. But I remember like, I think being at LFF really made me like, I must have turned to Coles and, and I was like, this film is actually good. Like, because <laughs> like the times that I've watched Rocks, um, like before, it took me a long time to actually like engage with the film and watch it as if I'm not watching myself. Because as a post, I always says like we're our worst critics. So um, seeing other people's reactions, especially from LFM, like hometown, people that are going to really get this film, people that this film was like made for essentially, and seeing their wonderful reactions, I was thinking in my head like, raw, like, like raw. That's the that's not that's not even a word, but that's that's my reaction. <laughs> Don't worry, I know exactly like I know exactly how feel. <laughs> that's all you need yeah. to say. <laughs> so, and honestly, yeah, like what Bucky said, um, I didn't, yeah, we st I still haven't got that, like, you know, that, like, what, like, this is actually real, but when we were in LFF, we had that mini moment where we both looked at each other and we were actually like, this film is actually good, like, people actually like this film, like, so, it's, yeah, still, it's so, like, it's just, it's a crazy thing to, you know, kind of, like, um, like, in a film, like, it's so weird, like, who'd ever thought, like, just insane mm. so I don't even know like I don't even know what to say like right now I'm just like what the hell but like Bucky said it took me it took us so long to actually watch the film like I have I didn't really watch it like I would always look at myself and think that's of course what so you can't even see what everyone else is doing or just like why am I standing like that so, yeah. Yeah, until like LFF like even after LFF I never really watched the film for the film so if that makes sense no it does it makes complete sense no no honestly it makes complete sense i feel like you're your own like harshest critic and it's yeah. like no, obviously everyone else is just watching it sort of from an from an outside point of view and when mm. you've been part of something it's the same like with me sometimes like with music like even with music videos or like writing i'm always like oh my god like that mm. angle is disgusting like i come to uh, and then but people are, that are just consuming it as art and they're just like 
this is fucking amazing. Like no one else <laughs> is as harsh as exactly. like you are on yourself. Yeah. But just hearing you guys talk about it and even just like hearing about you two, just like the looks you give each other. Do you guys sort of confide in each other or do you like, even though a lot, a lot of this is positive, have you ever kind of gone, oh, this is actually like a bit much. It's making me a bit nervous or, you know, do you, do you guys talk to each other in, in that way? Does that make sense? I don't know if that question makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it's I'm so grateful that I'm going through all of this with Bookie because if it was me alone, that Bookie and all the other women, because if it was me alone, I'd be like, yeah, I'm cutting, I'm gonna head out, thank you. I'm not, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done. Because sometimes it does get hard because you know, you know, like we're not used to all these interviews and you know, like red carpet events. So sometimes it would be like, you get a bit like, oh like I'm tired or I did this bad or oh, this was horrible I don't want to do this anymore so I would tell Bookie like she's the first person I always I'm like, like I'll text her or if she's here I'll be like yeah listen this is so shit like I don't know why did I do it like this oh no, no. she'll just tell me listen relax take a deep breath you did good like just shush so yeah I'm so grateful that I'm going through all of this with Bookie because without her I'll be finished I'll be like yeah <laughs> And then cut the cameras. For real. I'm with that. No, like, leg legit, honestly, what costs are served. I feel like that's the beauty of Rocks. Um, it's not only the film, but the people behind it. I've established relationships that I literally, like, I need, like, Kosa, Teresa, like, Coco, and the Jamaica, just straight. Mm. Lucy Barney, Wada, Rose. There's so many, there's so many women, amazing, amazing women that I've met on the journey. And Lucy Polly, the cast director, as well as like Annie Henriquez, the associate director, Teresa Akoko, Wada, Rose, a, a lot of them formed like um, an organization called Bridge, where mm -hmm. we can talk amongst ourselves. And it's basically like, it's basically a bridge between us as first time actors into the industry. Like yeah. A lot of people that are in our positions, they don't really have a like a really good support network, and that's how they end up going down. You know? Yeah. So that's I'm really grateful for for them. I'm really grateful for Kosa. I'm really grateful for the rest of the cast. Um, I feel like as well as learning how to act, I've become a better person during the process. Having such fruitful conversations with all these mm. wonderful ladies. Um, just being a, being around, I feel like being around good energy is so important and I'm really grateful for us and I was, I was surrounded by such mountainful energy yeah. every single day. I mean, I've never, like, Ali Henriquez was, like, literally in a hubbub, like, every single day doing stuff and I've never seen, like, a frown on her face mm -hmm. and that's the same with Claire Wilson and Teresa Akuka and Sarah Davran and including Kosa Ali. Um, I've never seen her, I've never seen her frown, I've never seen any sort of negative dim light from her or the rest of the girls. So, yeah, I don't know if I kind of went on a tangent, but... Um, no, no, honestly, it's, you, can, you can really feel that. And I think the film is obviously made with like so much love and nothing seems like it was just done for the sake of it. Like everything sort of seems to have a purpose and you know, you, you, you can see that there are like real, real voices in this film and it's not just, you know, for the sake of making a film. You can, you can see that it's made with passion and it's very nice <laughs> for me to watch it. And I just feel lucky, like I was like, the, you know, just me being the, the tiniest part of this film, I feel so lucky just to be, be part of this and just be talking to you guys and being able to watch the film before it came out. You know, I was just like, you, you, it feels very, very special and it's very exciting and I can't wait I can't wait for everyone else to see this film because it deserves to be watched by everybody. And, you know, you guys are just so down to earth and lovely. And I know that there are going to be some big things coming for you. No. And I can't wait. And I'm going to be there like, yes, I had a Zoom with them too. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, thank you so much for even having us and giving your sound to Rocks and be so generous with what you created. It's so like, it's how is it though creating music like it must be hard because you know when you make a sound like what like because i'm so indecisive so i probably make it and be like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so how do you do it i think i think it's obviously it's like trial and it's like trial and error like obviously at the very very beginning i've been doing it for like three three and a half years now and i ha i actually d 
like when I say I had no idea what I was doing mm -hmm. I was literally just like trying random stuff because I didn't know really like who I was as an artist so mm -hmm. it's over, only over the past year that I really kind of got my and your sound my kind of sound and then and then for me like once I have something that I like like I that it's weird because like it's not m me being indecisive which is really the problem because once I have it I have it it doesn't, doesn't take that long to get to the stage but then it's like with music you have so many other people's opinions that you have to worry yeah. about like the label yeah. and then management and then like fans and it all kind of has to and, and I'm really lucky because I've got such an amazing team like around me it's sort of like similar to yours like, I've just I feel really supported and a lot of people that do music like don't have that and they're always fighting with their label and I, I, I'm quite lucky in that way, but you obviously like there's compromise. So I think it's just everyone getting on like a level playing field, but I think I'm just lucky that I'm with people that have the same vision as me and they just, whatever I want to do, they just want to sort of amplify it. What are some of your biggest influences in the music industry? My biggest influences, I think I was a massive fan of Lily Allen when I was younger and um, she kind of showed me that you can, be your like you can just be yourself and you don't have to like compromise who you are and you don't have to be you don't have to be sort of submissive and quiet mm -hmm. you can speak you can know you can speak your mind and I thought that was you know amazing and I was like 12 years old like no younger I must have been like eight years old listening to her first album and this album is like uh tea and I was just listening to it like whoa like, I have no idea what she's talking about but I think you know because I, I I grew up in North London and just being being around that obviously kind of molded me into to who I am and I try and I try and sing with my accent like my British accent which because it's such a big part of who I am like where I'm from so I'm like I don't really want to give give that up so that's definitely that's definitely like a big influence yeah just being from London I guess mm -hmm. so it's nice I feel like this is perfect the perfect film that I could have possibly kind of like work like been a part of and worked on so thanks <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys have in the future. Honestly, like it's gonna be very, very bright. I can, I can tell, and I think everyone's gonna love this film. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Honestly, no thank worries. you. Thanks for having me, and um, it was nice to talk to you guys. Nice and to meet. You. Hopefully, meet you in real life as well. I know. So nice me, honestly, I know. Literally, I'm like, I'm not feeling this like Zoom vibe. I'm like, oh, <laughs> not another Zoom. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll be there. I will be there. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. No Bye. worries. No worries. Thanks for being here. Bye. <laughs>